Oh, j'ai vu Spain, sorry. <laughs> with, with time, maybe. Okay, so I'm the designated moderator for the discussion that is planned to last the next 25 minutes. And the idea is that we have at our disposal the presenters and also the knowledge that is in the audience to answer the, the questions that you might have or the suggestions regarding the developments within the, the community of uh, the living atlases. So, is anyone willing to break the ice? Hi, it's Deb Paul. This is from the last speaker you mentioned uh, in passing the, like using Docker and helping your communities learn to use these kinds of tools. And I'd be interested in hearing from you and the others in the room and online uh, about ways to move forward or ways we're learning about models that work to help empower our communities to have the skills they need to build and use the things we're building. So, so who, who wants to answer that? So, Dave, you have the floor. Hi there. Um, I, I guess I've only got one one answer really is, is more workshops, I guess. And uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, workshops and, web and webinars, um, I guess, is, is, is my only one one answer really for uh, improving sort of knowledge within the community. Um, hopefully, some of the activities from ALA and, and the other living atlases also provides. Uh, like Helen mentioned uh, doing React components. Um, all of this can be brought together in in workshops and, and webinars and just with some knowledge sharing that will uh, help us all. Does, does that help, Dad? Um, or is there is more to your question that should be? So, so that helps. I've been thinking about this a lot from a local perspective where I currently work, where I soon discovered there is no such strategy across a department of like 600 people. Um, and in addition to that, I learned from this project in Germany, this NFDI for biodiversity. They're experimenting with an idea. They took 15 different infrastructures. You could think of that as instances of the living atlases or, or other things. But in this case, it's actually 15 different biodiversity data uh, components, like bicycles, sort of. And they've in instituted a sort of back a group effort, so a backdoor, front door approach. So they've recognized that some people want to use the back door, a la APIs, something like that, in order to access data and, and use it uh, for their purposes. Other people want to use the front end. And so they have a joint help desk across all of those instances. Bicycle's approach has been each individual participant inside those connected nodes provides their own training. So I'm looking for models and ideas as I think about data help desks on a global scale down to a local scale so that we can share that expertise more effectively. So that's, that's why the question. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I guess I just comment, if you can still hear me, um, on, on Deb's idea that splitting into different interest groups makes a lot of sense because if we're just talking about the Atlas that itself, there's this front end, there's this back end web services, there's also the uh, data ingestion that in itself would be probably a, a large interest group. So splitting into different um, different parts might, might, might make sense, might make it more approachable, tractable. Right. Anyone? Uh, hello. Uh, I have a question about the special portal because we plan to implement it uh, on uh, OpenOps. 
And so I think we will need uh, some light uh, about it because uh, I don't know how to implement it if we need uh, to get our data on this special portal. So if you have time uh, maybe after to talk about it, uh, it would be nice. I guess it is you, Dave, again. Um, yes, uh, the spatial portal is, uh, is something that we've been wondering what to do with about long term. And it's particularly with um, a growing our community. Um, so a discussion around what people want around us from the spatial portal would be a useful thing, I think. Um, we, I think uh, Australia and I know UK and Sweden and other countries have, have found a, a growing R community and just the LR package that we put a lot of um, effort into updating and providing good documentation around that fulfills a lot of, there's a lot of the things that the spatial portal does um, but in a more um, there's perhaps a more productive way for, for some researchers. So we're wondering what, what the balance is there between uh, the, the spatial port functions and uh, the R package. Um, so a conversation around that would be, would be good. Uh, and we've also been developing the, um, the Python version of Galar recently. So that again, will provide some of the, some of the functions that people um, might have used in the spatial portal, but they can write their own scripts. I, I might come in there as well, Peggy from the ALA. So, um, so I think it was Helen who spoke before about um, looking at map, map components, map react components. And I know as part of our UX review, we're looking at all of our map all of our map components in, in the UI, it would be interesting to see what sort of requirements you have, um, you know, what, what sort of stuff you want to do in the spatial portal. Like the spatial portal is a massive tool and it's got lots and lots of things. And it's, if, you know, if it's as simple as, um, you know, wanting a slightly more complex um, mapping tool, maybe, um, you know, maybe that's worth thinking about. Like I, I think uh, what Dave was saying before about, um, you know, having particular interest groups or, in, you know, topics of discussion might be a good idea and spatial might be one of them. Like, can you speak about what what you want from the spatial portal? It, we just plan to implement it. We don't know yet what we want to appear on this portal, but it's to get our data, make some research on it, and specialize uh, to map it. I know, but I don't know. We have to work on it. And... Yeah, just to uh, continue on the spatial portal, I think uh, in the patronat department, there's the tax ref uh, checklist for uh, taxonomic uh, references, but they are also developing HubRef, which is a national reference uh, sort of checklist for habitats. So I think that might be one of the things they want to implement on the spatial portal uh, to to have a, a list of different habitats that in, that can appear on maps. Uh, I think it was uh, shown on the uh, presentation of a, uh, Atlas of Living Austria at the beginning of the session. Well, just to, to join the, the, the club of people that are after the, the spatial portal in Spain, we're really interested in that. I mean, and, we have an implementation, but so far it is very unstable. Um, it's, for us, it's hard to make it work, even with the help of Vicente. So, a better documentation, and of course, the, the, for us, the, the first level is 
able, uh, to be able to to show the the layers in i mean with in a robust enough environment that is the first level and then we can play with other more sophisticated algorithm um, and things if you want to invite the scientists yes. for, for further discussion on the question of oh. or this point of view uh well maybe vicente once uh, can talk about what are the the difficulties or the problems we are facing in implementing the, the spatial portal i'm um, some suggestions about how to to move better in that direction hi well we have a, a normal spatial installation and uh, the problem we have now uh, is that we cannot upgrade, but this is a common uh, problem for the rest of the portals and we are trying to to solve uh, together. But it's uh, well, it's, it's more like a sysadmin problem, let's say. Who? Can you read it? Because I have drawing with my eyes. So, thanks, Vicente. And let me help uh, with the, this question online. Um, you probably had some use cases in mind when you started your respective living atlases, but have you been surprised by any of the ways people access yours once you started it? I think that is to ask. Well, I, th I think I, I can answer that. We don't have enough uh, of a use base to a user base to, to answer that because it is, as I said, kind of um, unstable. So we haven't announced it in in a big way. So we we have just a few people using the the, the Spanish implementation of the the spatial portal. So we cannot answer that yet. Well, that's, then that is for Vicente to tell us. Can you repeat the question in the room? We, we didn't really hear it. Um, did, did you get the, the question, Vicente? No, 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 I think no, nobody. <laughs> But online. You can read it in the chat. Yes, please. Okay. It is there. Yeah, let me read it again. You probably had some use cases in mind when you started your respective living atlases, but have you been surprised by any of the ways people access yours once you started it? No, but that question we cannot answer. The, the question that we can answer is about the problems of the obstacles that we have been facing in, in making the, the special portal work. Uh, um, well, the, the, the thing is, uh, we, we are, uh, as we talked uh, in, in, in our presentation, we, we were using Ansible uh, to, to, to deploy all the, the service, but um, is, uh, spatial is not the 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 role the role the role that that, that deploy the, the spatial service is not uh, uh, well up to date. So we we have to date the the, the, the DOPS code to 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 have uh, the rest of, of spatial spatial portals uh, up to date. Uh, so we are using a, an older version of spatial right now. I don't know if it's clear that my explanation. So what will what would you like to, to see? I mean better documentation of the modern spatial portal or what will what, what will make your, your life easier? Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, well, 
it's difficult to, to not be very technical, but um, we need more uh, depth code to because uh, let's say the Australia is, is managing this service a, a bit uh, well uh, like manual manually um, we need to and, and it's difficult uh, many times to 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 well we, we sometimes we don't know the, what this change. Uh, this manual change uh, without documentation or or code like, like the the other rest of of service so we need to to date the the depth of code hey i was going to say um if you're saying that the baseline um requirement for the spatial portal is to display polygons on a map is there um do you think that there's like usefulness in the regions tool, for example? Does do you use the regions tool? Does that um, go some way to satisfying that requirement, or does it fall short? Well, I personally, uh, when I get into those kind of uh, matters, I, I I choose the the special portal and use the polygons and use the layers. I, I don't go for, I don't go for the regions, but that is my personal. Uh, can I ask why though? Why? Yeah. Because I, I find the the special portal give me more options. Yeah. Okay. So so there are other bits of functionality that you need. Um. And what are they? That the yeah, regions is. I mean, maybe I am wrong in my perception, but I see regions like a simplification of the special portal, and and then I go directly for the. Yeah, okay. yeah but, but just taking advantage that very few people are connecting to that service at the moment, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just keen to understand whether, um, you know, whether if the, it, uh, the the spatial portal is laden with a lot of tools, lots and lots and lots, and, yeah. uh, you know, maybe you could simplify it, but, but yes. it's hard to work out what you would. Um, Let's say that it's not we, what, as a user now, but mm. I want to to see together and to to do filters and combinations is the biodiversity occurrences, polygons and layers, like climatic layers, land use layers. Mm -hmm. So it's with polygons, it's very limited for what I want. Ah, so you're talking about layers. Um, environmental layers as well. They need to be somewhere, that's, right? That's the key point. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Um, okay. Yep. Um, Dave asked a question on the line. For the projects running Living Atlases, what are the new data types um, that you plan or want to support in the next um, 18 to 24 months, for example, eDNA or, or events? Uh, can we start with somebody else? <laughs> um, Remy, can, can, um, do you want to have a go at answering that? You need a microphone. <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> Over why that? No, sorry, it's not a technical answer, but we're working with eDNA at the in the Patronat department, and I've been presenting uh, our uh, works at during the EDNA, eDNA symposium uh, this morning. So I think there will be needs in terms of uh, eDNA data displaying on the open ops portal in the future. But I cannot go more into detail than that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't make it all the way through your talk this morning. Is there, um, did, did you have a look at the, um, is it, what's, what's the name of the Swedish portal, SBDI? Yeah, yeah, that, um, the ABS portal, is that, um, you know, is that something that we could, it, that meets your needs or does it have a similar functionality to the work you've done, Sophie? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, I think uh, the SBDI uh, portal c could be a really great inspiration for us because we're just at the beginnings of uh, trying to share the eDNA data. Uh, so we are still thinking about mappings and uh, which tools we are going to use to uh, build the, the, refer the, the, the national sequence reference uh, database. But then once it's uh, built, uh, we need to share it with the the world, so uh, we we definitely uh, will have a look at the SBDI portal to uh, see. We, sorry, who is online? You think? Ah, yeah. Maria Praka, if it seems that if you're online, you maybe answer this. Uh, add some issue. Uh, Maria, if you were if you were there, it would be interesting to um, hear if you think that the ABS might have application for other living atlases. Oh, she's not there. Sorry, I just saw her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there was another question there or another comment. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Does um oh, does anyone want to wrap up or say anything else about eDNA at this stage? <laughs> I think it might be a topic. Is it a topic that we need to talk about that that a discussion together would benefit? Yeah? Okay. Um, the screen's different. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, all right. It's about eDNA. It's about eDNA. So, um, Margaret, no. Okay, might have to come back to that. Um, as a general rule, how many IT do, how many IT people do you have supporting your Living Atlas full time? I'm going to have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, can uh, I, over to you? Uh, for us in France, uh, we have um, one, one and a half, two. I don't know if I can. I mean, there is Remy, uh, which is uh, one full time equivalent, and Alice. Uh, but I don't know, Alice, if can we consider you at full time, not more? On this, of course, you are working full time equivalent, but on, on open ups, maybe, well, currently you work a lot on this. Hmm? 80? 40%? Yes. So let's say one and a half. And uh, yes, and since, uh, phew, hey, Edwin is really counting now? <laughs> no, now is, no, yet yeah, now we can count on another person, but it's really brand new. Um, it's, it's only since a few months, I think. It works a lot during, okay, I know, so I my mistake. So let's say two and a half. Yes, that's it. Okay. For friends. For Spain is uh, one person half time. Vicente. Vicente, yes. And sorry. Oh, yes, Hélène uh, online. How many uh, people you are working on? IT. IT people, yes, working on it. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, just there's two of us. At the moment, there's just two of us. We may be getting a third person coming along as well. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, and and with the two of us, I mean, we're really pushed. It's a it's a massive job actually. Without you know, maintaining our, managing our platform, our Atlas. But we do also customise it as well, don't we? So we probably make life a bit harder for ourselves. <laughs> because it's not designed to be customised, really, is it? Thank but, you. Uh, so we'll co continue, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to repeat myself saying, yes, it's a, it's a big job for just two people. Thank you. Yeah. And Danja, uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, as Austrian at 
Atlas say Austrian Atlas it is just one IT person part time. And is SBDI, you know how we and SBDI Sweden, we have two people working full time on the ALA platform, uh, a systems architect and a developer. Then we have, I think, two people working more on building bridges <laughs> between kind of old, older national systems uh, so that we can access it through um, SBDI plat platform, but they're not built on ALA. And then we have this consortium and there are a lot of people that have, you know, like 10% of the time or 15%, but actually produce amazing things such as uh, Maria Pracker and the team in Lund that I was talking about, but that's harder to quantify. Any other comments or oh, online? No, it's okay. Uh, there is a remark from Ellen online who says it would be good to have a discussion session like this between the ALA and LAs throughout the year. So. Ah, okay. So it was okay. And Vicente said, what about the ALA IT team size? Yeah, I've been trying to work that out um, <laughs> because we're um, ALA in total is um, uh, somewhere between 40 and 50 people, I think, and uh, we have um, our IT side is sort of divided into three teams, application systems and data. We've all got about eight people each. Um, so that's also supporting, um, you know, uh, BioCollect and uh, Digivol and some other um, some other applications. Um, so, yeah, I think, I guess that makes 24. Yeah. Yeah, just trying to compare apples with apples uh, with regards uh, regard to the core apps like BioCache, data ingestion, and so on. I think if it is like 80 eight, uh, people for data ingestion, taxonomy, and so on, and then uh, around eight people uh, for the development of the back end and the uh, user interface. So probably 16 people. Uh, yes, including the buffs. <laughs> okay. And I don't see there, there was a I, question at one point, but I, don't. I have. I have a general question, I mean, for all the presenters, which is how good is the the community of the living adolescents at incorporating all these fancy developments that we have seen in this session back into the the trunk of the code of the code? I mean, have uh, been reduced, have been documented these developments we have seen for Flanders for France, for UK. I mean, for us, it was Sylvain who was, was working a lot on this, so it's difficult for me to In answer. Doc anyway. Documenting and making these <clears throat> developments available for the rest of the community, or is it just things coming out of Australia and the others just grabbing pieces and adapting them, or is, is the loop um, closed? I don't know if uh, Alice, you have an idea about. I know that Sylvain, our previous site, in fact, uh, Remy arrived just last July. But before we had another IT guy, Sylvain, uh, one, uh, Martin yeah. one, wants to say something. Okay. So, they yes, go for How it. much yeah. of those developments happening around the world comes back to to the core? It's a, it's a, it's a proportion of them, it's not all of them. Um, I guess it's, it's a challenge for. Um, the, the ALA to sort of keep track of them um, and, and often we, we just don't know about them because we, um, people haven't sort of communicated that they exist but um, I mean a sort of, sort of levels of um, of goodness here I, I, I mean a, 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 a very sort of basic thing would be would be good to for people to make their changes available in 
in open repositories it, it, as a GitHub fork. Um, following on from that would be just to communicate it on the Slack channel that this work's been done. Uh, we're doing this and maybe links to uh, GitHub issues that they're, they're, they're trying to track. Um, but we have had some features come back to, uh, to the ALA. Um, uh, I, there's, there's, there's quite a few really um, from different communities. I'll pick out some of the UI features that France contributed to some of the tools. Um, so the, the answer is we could do better uh, as a community is in terms of um, sharing this. I, I think some regular sessions um i don't know how regular is feasible but maybe every six months or so uh, some sort of webinar session um where we can share um sort of experiences and what people are working on might help communication a bit and um, some more time face time between uh, the different uh, technical people working on these projects that's something that we haven't really done for a while. Um, we were having year, annual workshops um, prior to COVID, um, and that hasn't really uh, come back. Uh, uh, and it'd be, it'd be good to see that resurrected in some form, whether it's in-person meetings or some sort of uh, online events that we can organize. That will help them. Um, knowledge sharing about what, what other atlases are doing and, and hopefully feed things back into into the core GBIF repositories. Uh, GitHub repositories, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, it, like, COVID's put us back quite a bit, right, in terms of being able to um, communicate with each other and, and that sort of thing. We haven't really set up anything in its stead, so perhaps... Um, perhaps a few of us might like to try to at least coordinate some meeting times. Um, and the other thing, uh, just the other thing I would say about that is that um, I wonder if having, um, you know, running an open source software project like this means a few more boring things like governance and, um, you know, um, and, you know, meeting about where we want to go together and, and you know, who, who wants to, you know, who's developing what and, and whether you can actually plan to work together on, on things. Um, but, yeah, a bit of coordination. A bit of coordination might end up with more value um, for, for everyone. Yep. Is it... Yeah, are there group is there, are there other groups willing to be part of that, like um, coordinating meetings? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I I think it would be yeah. beneficial uh, for for all all of us. I mean, the, the community part of the the living atlases, because. From my perspective, we have seen kind of very similar variations of customizations that maybe could be tackled in a more coordinated way, more efficient way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I think also it's after the before the COVID, we 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 did a lot of workshops and and uh, and it's true that with the COVID it stops a little bit, and I think it would be really valuable to. Uh, try to rebuild to this, yes, to recover yep. this because clearly it was really useful, and and it's right after the COVID and, the, and also for us, for example, there, there was a change in turnover in the staff, and so um, it's also uh, Remy arrived last July, and I think it's also important if he can uh, if we can organize a workshop, it's going to be easier to go and work together and talk. So, yeah. well. Javier is telling me that we are late. Okay. So we have to wrap up this, uh, well, discussion after the, the session. Oh, and then, yes. Sorry, yeah, I was just going to say, at the NBN, be happy to, you know, get involved with arranging discussions and meetings with the, the Living Atlases and the LA. And for example, uh, you know, we've been doing work on access controls, which might be of uh, interest. And it makes use very much so of the, existing codes that the, the ALA have so 
we could do some documentation for that, but obviously that takes time. And uh, but we would be willing to do it rather than just you know having a branch there. Then you have to look at the code and reverse engineer what we've done. Um, so if anyone's interested in the access controls and what we've done for it, we can make something available, and maybe we can just do that with other things in future as well, other things that we implement. And same true of the other atlases, building atlases. If they do new stuff, they can do documentation as well. Anyway, just thought I'd say that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's all right. Yeah, I, um, I think just before we wrap up, I just wanted to say too that um, I don't know if people here are aware that the Galar package, uh, the R package, um, queries all of the living atlases by cache services. Do you, are you aware of that? No. Nope. Yes. No. 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 Yes. I, I, I wasn't. <laughs> so you've you've got an R package. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we should wrap up. Thanks. Yeah. Well, then thank you very much to all of you and yeah. thank you very much to the presenters and the developers. Yeah, there is just a, a last comment online if I have time. Or the, as Dimitri mentioned, he needs to support providing access to non-public data for authorized users. What of our atlases have want to support this requirement? And Andrea answered, Austria would be interested looking into this as we struggle getting data providers on board especially if they have sensitive data. For there is the sensitive data service. And we normally try to encourage data providers to make their data openly available. Yeah. Uh, I know that for France, it's also a uh, uh, question at Patrinat in our department. Not for JB France, because at JB we said that we want everything open. But in, in our broader department, it's, uh, it's also a question. And uh, clearly, uh, people will be interested in it. Yeah. So it looks like we have to wrap up. Yes. So by, okay. thank you, uh, all the presenters and all the um, uh, person who are here. Uh, of course, the discussion will continue. And I think that as a wrap up, I think what we could say that organizing new workshop, IT technical uh, discussion and broader would be a nice idea. Does it so okay for you? Yeah. Right. But thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you.